So what we see in the in in this is you know basically um, we have recording artists who are major major recording artists who you know uh, fight against unauthorized downloading or piracy. You know at the end, you know that you kind of it's revealed that um, they're not interested in the art part. That's not what they're protesting. Like like Moop, um, they're just in it for the money. Uh, and it, it's a pretty valuable critique on this notion of, you know, in the music industry, are you creating art or are you creating entertainment? And yeah, they can be a little bit of both, um, but not a lot of mainstream recording artists, I mean, minus like your Billie Eilish or like uh, Kendrick Lamar, maybe, um, you know, artists like that, like, it's really hard to look at some of those recording artists and say that they're making art uh, where they're maybe just make you know caving into mass trends or making bubblegum stuff that appeals and will, and will sell um, whereas they could probably make art they could probably uh, you know uh, use their authority in the marketplace and power to create art like maybe Beyonce or Jay-Z have done, you know, um, with some of their new music and music videos is make, make a, make a statement that maybe they couldn't have when they were just interested in, in, or, you know, trying to sell records specifically. So let's look a little bit at how the music industry is structured and we'll talk a little bit about how it works. So you have what are called music groups. Um, the, the three main ones, in fact, there's, there's three of them is, uh, Universal Music Group, which is the largest one in the world. Uh, you have Sony, and you also you also have uh, 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 Warner Brothers, uh, and that's kind of like the extent of it. So you have these four music groups. Now these music groups they all own um, record labels, record distributors, um, music publishers, etc. So they kind of own everything except for retail. Um, retail, they, they tend to not have a hand in because that would make them essentially uh, a cartel. Um, if they're con able to control the production of music all the way to how you, how you consume it, uh, in terms of like owning the stores, uh, which they don't, uh, brick and mortar or, or, uh, online stores. They may have a little bit of a hand in some of those and an investment in some of those spaces, but they don't technically own record stores or you know wherever you get music from if you buy it um you have okay so that's that's what a, a a music group is and these music groups are often owned by larger conglomerates or larger companies for instance um universal music group is owned by vivendi vivendi also owns activision which made like dj hero and guitar hero um you know, these uh, media, conglo these conglomerates will also own, you know, other uh, film companies, TV stations, all sorts of various um, media outlets where they're able to sort of exploit um, their content, essentially, and market their content. Okay, so you have uh, music groups, okay, and it's made up of all these, you know, um, different entities, like a record label. Record label, you know, signs a recording artist. It gives them a loan, which is called an advance. And in return, the recording artist is supposed to record an album and give the album to the record label. The record label then uh, markets and promotes the the album and that and owns it. They own the rights to the to the sound recording. Okay, uh, publishers. They basically. They are trying, they rep so record labels represent uh, recording artists, the people you hear on record. Publishing companies rep represent uh, songwriters and composers, the people who write the music and write the lyrics. That may not be, and in fact, in a lot of instances with mainstream uh, pop artists may not necessarily be the artists. Like Beyonce has a team of like 40 writers on her last album, and that's fairly common. Um, not always, but um, so anyways, publishers represent um, uh, composers and songwriters, lyricists, who maybe write like a Britney Spears song and Britney goes in and performs it and records it, you know, um, and so that's what a publisher is. And a distributor is who takes these recordings and gets them to places. 
streaming, so they, they get them to the streaming place, or they get physical albums to record stores, they distribute content. Um, you know, and again, like most music groups own all of these things, publishing companies, etc. Um, distribution companies, and you know, uh, most of the music that you hear is distributed most of the mainstream music, let's say, is distributed distributed by um, these three companies, 95% of it. So these three specific companies, okay? Um, yeah, and then you obviously, like I said, you have performing and recording artists. So in the case of Christian uh, Hard Rock, you know, the performing recording artists are Britney Spears, Lars Ulrich, Master P, um, you know, again, they may or may not write their own music. Songwriters, composers may write their music, okay? Uh, but publishing companies, and publishing is major, uh, publishing covers everything from collecting royalties and monies for uh, songs when they're played on the radio. When a song is played on the radio that you hear in your car, uh, the recording artist, say Britney Spears, does not get paid, but whoever wrote the song for Britney gets paid. The same for when, um, you know, uh, a Britney Spears song is played at Autzen or performed by uh, the marching band. Britney Spears doesn't get paid. Whoever wrote that song gets paid, gets those publishing royalties. Um, so, you know, these are for public performance. So, like, again, when a music is played at a restaurant, the recording artists like Britney Spears or Master P do not get paid unless they wrote the lyrics and composed the, the music for that because there's no performance rights for recording artists except for on uh, Pandora, Spotify, satellite radio, online radio, um, and streaming. So for those forms, uh, recording artists do get paid, but they don't get paid for traditional things uh, that you would commonly think that they may get paid for, okay? Um, Pub, you know, for these songwriters and composers, these publishing royalties are collected by publishing rights organizations like ASCAP, CSAC, and BMI. You've probably you've probably probably heard of them. And then Sound Exchange collects royalties for digital performances, um, web, satellite, etc., and pays that money to uh, recording artists and also pays um, to uh, publish publishers as as well. Okay. Um, we have retail. This is physical and digital. Again, physical retail is a sort of dying thing, um, and you know most music is bought, bought, uh, and consumed via stream uh, in the United States now, and in a lot of places around the world. So a very small percentage of music is actually consumed uh, physically at this at this point. And then the trade organization that represents the recording industry is the um, RIAA, the Recording Industry. Association of America, which is very similar to the MPAA. So some of the things they do is they advocate for recording artists. So in the case of Christian Rock Hard, you know, uh, the RIA would lobby on behalf of recording artists and make them appear like victims who are doomed to a life of only semi-luxury um, because of piracy. They would lobby Congress to pass laws that are more favorable to recording artists specifically to record labels that's who they they mainly repre they mainly represent and they're c composed of some musicians but also many uh, executives from record labels um, you know but they lobby congress and they represent the interests of the industry so all the piracy numbers that you hear stuff like that those are all generated by the RIAA or the IFPI which is the international phonograph whatever so it's the international RIAA 